Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful old photo look to turn this into this. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria. And by the way, if you want to support my channel and you like my videos, head over to Patreon where I have some great options for you. Okay, let's get started with this video. So I have quite some steps in this video to give you some choices about how to do this, how to have an interesting look for it. So the first thing of course we do is to import this photo and then the next step I would uh, go about is to put the paper in first. So this gives you an area um, where you know there will be the old photo inside. So you can hold the shift key and resize this and this will allow you to um, move it or, or stretch it into any kind of size you so you can exactly match the picture. You can already see what's going on. And by the way, for this tutorial, I'm using two papers that I'm blending with each other uh, because this gives me a more interesting texture for the paper. So this is the first extra step that I would suggest to do. Let's rotate this real quick. I put this up here in the left corner, then take the lower right corner, hold shift and stretch it out so it fits the size um, of the paper. And already you can see we have two problems. Um, here we have a white um, background and here this goes to the border. And of course our picture also is um, full size. So this would go also in the white area. Um, you can easily work around that um, by first right clicking here. So this is uh, to rasterize it. Uh, so this is uh, becoming a pixel layer. Then I go up here to my flood selection tool on the left side. I will set the tolerance to 5% because this is white. All, all of this. So I click here once, this will create a, a selection. And from this, I will just uh, control C, control V to copy paste it um, over everything. And now you can see if I, um, how can I say, if I hide the other layers, all of this is of course behind the white layers here. So this is really helpful for me. And what we're gonna do is to have these two uh, paper layers set to multiply. So the first and the second both go to multiply. You can already see that this looks nice. It looks like it's on the paper. We're gonna do some more tricks to give it uh, a little bit of an edge inside. Uh, but first I want to adjust the photograph. And now with the paper and the multiplying of the layers above of the image, I can see how the next steps are going to look. So this is kind of helpful. So the next thing that we're going to do is to create an adjustment layer for black and white. And this gives us all these levers here. And this is really nice because it allows us to see what kind of colors should be stronger or darker or lighter basically in the black and white picture. So try all of those. You can see this, for example, is mostly influential down here in the pattern on the leaves and you can really bring out detail or hide it. It very uh, intensely reacts with her shirt. So you can make her shirt very bright or very dark. So. It's really interesting with black and white photos that you have this kind of variety to make it look basically any way you want. So I will keep it like this. That's okay. The next thing we are going to do is going to create another adjustment layer for levels because old cameras didn't come or the old film didn't have this kind of great um, response to light that we have today. So it didn't have as much, um, how can I say? that is not as much level, so you can reduce them a bit and this will make um, the picture look even older. And what you can also do down here with the gamma, uh, you can play around and see if you get an interesting look for you. I will leave it like that, so that's good. Okay, the next thing we are going to do is another thing uh, that comes from old cameras and old films. So I'm creating a add a pixel layer down here and I'm going to use my gradient tool. So click here and drag it out to just create a gradient for now. And after we have created that, we click up here to type and set it to elliptical and we will set 
double or click here on the colors and set one color to black and the other one to white. And this is the wrong way around. We want to have the black in the middle. So uh, the gradient reverse button here will help up with, up, uh, us with that. So we have um, changed that now. You can see this helps me really set the area uh, when it's elliptical compared to, uh, uh, how is it called? Radial. So it's just a circle and elliptical allows me more to choose um, where I want to have the area. And what we're going to do with that is we set it to soft light. It's down here. And as you can see here, this gives us a choice where we want to have more details and where we want to have less details. As you can see here, if I move this down here, there's a lot of detail in here, nice gradation. Um, and when I move it away from that, this is uh, much lighter and doesn't have as much detail. So uh, this is also something you had in old cameras that some areas uh, would be better from the light and others wouldn't be as great or get too much light. So the picture would look different on different areas of the picture. And this helps us a lot with making it look old. Okay. So now we have done this, we can introduce uh, some scratches, some dust, and also, uh, how do you say, some, some noise to the, to the um, picture. So for this, we will simply place grunge maps. I also will link these in the video description, by the way, as all the other things. So here you can see we have um, a bunch of uh, um, noise and scratches make this a little bit bigger we can take for example which one do we want to take let's take this one here can put it over the picture this has a quite high resolution so i will zoom out real quick i know you can't see right now what i'm doing i'm just resizing it and putting it back over the picture so it looks like this and um with this we will set it to screen like that so we just have these little white scratches here picture you can still move it around uh, to find the right place as you want it to be and by the way I'm gonna rasterize this real quick there we go so this also reduces the file size and makes it uh, the, the workflow a little bit more fluent and faster there we go let's select another one maybe this one here and again I have to zoom out real quick and resize this move it again over the picture then I can zoom in again and set it to screen and by the way if you think if you feel like these are too intense on your picture you can always go in here and reduce the opacity and you will see that this will uh, reduce the impact so it's turning more into a gray it's not that uh, intense on the picture so I will do this here I will also rasterize this layer so it's a bit smaller there we go. And the next one uh, that I want to do that I want to place in here is actually film grain. So uh, that's very nice. Let's place this here. We also have to resize this because this is quite a higher resolution than our picture we are using. There we go. Zoom in again. And this we will not set to screen. We will set this to negation or, the, or negation. I'm not sure how you pronounce it but I think you know what I mean okay and again with this um, I'm gonna rasterize it first there we go and also you can play around with the opacity to see how much film grain you want to have uh, on the picture so I will have it at 100% I think it looks pretty good so as you can see here you have a lot of different options with the scratches with the noise uh, with the gradient uh, sorry uh, with the film grain uh, on the picture to influence this. Another thing that I would suggest to you is uh, to go in here live filters and create a vignette filter. Um, this effect is kind of subtle but I think it makes um, a nice uh, difference. It looks a little bit more interesting and realistic or at least I um, like this kind of effect and I would really uh, rather make it subtle than too too extreme. By the way, uh, you can of course go uh, more extreme at the beginning to see where uh, your vignette actually is happening. So you get kind of a preview of the area. Otherwise, it might be a bit hard uh, to see what is going on and then 
go back to a value that you feel more comfortable with. And this should be just like a little bit of influence, not too much. Okay, so um, after we have created this, I you could stop here if you want to, but I find like um, having the photo go completely to the edge here doesn't really look as good as I want it to look. So what I would suggest to do here uh, is uh, you create a new pixel layer for that. There we go. And uh, I will go and make a selection here like this. So I have a little bit of an edge outside of the paper like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna uh, invert the selection, invert pixel selection. I'm gonna take my brush with white color on it and uh, let's set it 100% here and I will just paint all of this white. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna deselect and I have a little bit of a frame here as you can see. Um, there's white on the outside here and this gives me the benefit that now I don't have any uh, photo here in this area, uh, but still I want to change it a little bit. So I'm going to go selecting with, with this layer selected, I'm going to go here in effects and I'm going to go to bevel and emboss and click on this little wrench icon here so you get more choices. And um, we're going to hit the little hook here. So this is active and this is too extreme. As you can see, you can choose here different types of the bevel um, effect. Emboss could be good. Let's see, outer, inner. Inner is kind of nice. Let's go back to the pillow effect. The pillow effect is on all sides, so that might be nice. And you want to reduce that, of course, which have a very slight effect because it's just pressed in just a little bit, just a tiny hint. And we can set the direction to, uh, to the middle side here or in the center of this circle. And you can see here, if I turn it on and off, it's kind of a subtle effect. Um, can maybe make it a little bit more extreme. That's too much. Uh, maybe like that, that, that looks good. Let's change these and see what looks good. Embossed, actually I like the pillow effect most. And so this gives the impression that we have a little bit of a, uh, so the picture is sitting a little bit deeper uh, than the rest of the, of the paper. Let's go here. I set this a little bit off center uh, to the lower um, right side like this. And I think this makes quite a, a difference to making it look more realistic uh, in uh, uh, the effect that it's having. So basically this is what you can do with that. And like I said, you can now go in here to your black and white adjustment and readjust this uh, to get a different picture look if you want to. And the great thing you can also do if you have created one of these, you can just go in here and just place another picture. And one thing that I really want to um, suggest to you is select a picture with a light background because if it's a dark background, it mixes differently with the paper and you have a problem on the, on the edges with the look of the picture. So when I place a picture here, I select another one you can see here. This has a little bit um, of, um, how can I say, darker edges on the side. Okay, this is getting really slow. I hope my voice is still, um, wow, this is really high resolution. What the, okay, one second. Place this here a little bit more like this. And you can see that this works just as well. So you, uh, if you have created one of these files it as a master file uh, to just push in different pictures here. And so you can uh, create a lot of different old photo style pictures from this kind of master file, or you can create different master files for different looks. Okay, that was the tutorial for today for the old photo look. Thank you very much. If you like my uh, videos. I do two tutorials per week, so maybe subscribe to my channel. And as I said, if you want to support me, head over to Patreon. We have some great options for you. Thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.